Roll open. Welcome to Dwyer Field. Here's the Mason Comets take on the Princeton Vikings in a highly anticipated GMC matchup. I'm Andrew nice Little alongside my broadcast partner, Daniel Panetti, live for ICRC Sports. And Princeton taking the opening kickoff. It's Antonio Hunter all the way down to the 25-yard line. An incredible return. There's a way to start a football game. <laughs> Princeton is riding hot. 3-0, leading the GMC, coming off a 30-16 win over Lakota East, and then the week before, beat Lakota West, the reigning GMC champs, 18-3. Yeah, this Princeton team, they're riding the hot hand, as you said, 3-0, 2-0 in the GMC, just beat both Lakotas, and a big thing that Mason's going to have to watch out for is that new quarterback, D'Angelo Birch. He's a passer and he's a runner. He almost runs more than he throws the ball. He will make you pay, so make you pay through the air and make you pay on the run. Yeah, like you said, Daniel... Sophomore quarterback, D'Angelo Birch. They're a run-heavy team. Watch out for another sophomore, David Hambrick, their running back. He's going to start a show. And Hambrick, Birch, takes it on the read option and gets up to close to the first down marker. Yeah, what we're going to see lives that option offense. It's what Princeton has been thriving through the entire season. And I just love Birch does a great job of selling that fake. You're going to see a lot tonight. Uh, Looks like he's handing it off to Hambrick, but he keeps it himself, makes it a second and short. Princeton already in the red zone and already knocking at the door. Birch takes a snap, facing some pressure from Dowers, flag thrown. Birch going to tuck it, takes a big hit from Wolfolk on the sideline. Huge hit from Wolf from Wolfolk, and we're going to see a flag already. Nice job by Birch to just not force anything, try to take the small yards. And Princeton is walking back. I believe this one's going to be holding. That flag was thrown early in the play in the backfield. And something I saw uh, in their games versus West and East is that this is a very, uh, I know exactly what the word is, but this offense gets penalized a lot. Oh, yeah, so and last year that was the key is that Princeton had, I believe, 16 penalties, and that's why the Comets were able to come away with a 10 to 7 win. Penalties, you know, were their killer last year. Yeah, like you said, last year it's a low scoring game. This keys to the game for Princeton is pressure. The quarterback will get to that once Mason gets on the offense with the quarterback problems. The momentum, we mentioned earlier how they have that 3 0 run and looking to keep it going as of now. Yeah, when you have a young team, that early season momentum is so critical. Birch, Hambrick, all the guys how, have a lot of energy. How far did they get pushed back? And that holding 10, year, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, so pushes them back all the way to the 35-yard line. It's a killer penalty. So it's likely going to force Birch to throw the ball. It might see still in the shotgun, running back to his right, same formation as the option from that first play. Went from second and short to second and 20. Just can't have mistakes like that against Mason, who's trying to regroup off of a brutal loss last week. You can't give, you can't give them anything to try and stay in this game. And they're moving up. Yes, officials recalculating the distance. They, th they went back 15, needed to go back 10 yards. Another thing we need to look for, maybe not, maybe not this drive, but some trickery from Princeton's offense. Uh, the running back, David Hambrick, who's also a quarterback as well, a trick play is a 40-yard touchdown pass to uh, the senior Jordan Houston last week. So watch out for the dual threat. Birch takes it, hands off to Hambrick. Hambrick has a gap, but brought down. This Wolf hook again. All over the field so far. Not sure about the second and long run. It's going to set up a third and long. Their kicker so far, one for one on field goals this season. So wonder if they feel really confident with him. Once again, Birch and Hambrick, the sophomores in the backfield for Princeton. 
Cole Kimball with the play kick. action, rolls out to the left. Facing pressure. And he's taken down just in front of the line of scrimmage. It was Tammy Adesanya and Noah Dowers in on that tackle. And Noah Dowers, five solo tackles on the year. Three assists, a junior. Been stepping up pretty big this year. Almost a pretty new defense from last year. Last year was filled with seniors, so it's a pretty new look for this Mason defense. And before Hamilton, they were looking very, very good. So you wonder if they can get back some of that momentum, especially with the home crowd, two straight away games. Yeah, defense played really well in the first two weeks. Struggled last week, gave up 38, trying to rebound here. Birch facing a lot of pressure. Dumps it off to Hunter. Hunter's gonna get close to the first down line, but Comets think they stopped him. And the defense and offense coming off of the field. Nice job by Mason after the huge kick return, being able to stop them. Now we'll see the sophomore kicker come out, Cole Kimball, one for one on field goals so far this year. And after that amazing opening kickoff return, the Comets are definitely gonna take that forcing the Vikings to kick the field goal. You know, they started off with excellent field position. I'm surprised Princeton isn't considering going for this. You have the option uh, offense. The, um, Birch can choose he wants to keep the ball or not. And Comets. That was and Tally. Excuse us, that was fourth down earlier. Sakai Tally. The helmet comes the off. Comments. The helmet off, so he's going to have to check out after that play. Tally, 25 attempts on the year, 111 yards. Chase Blevins behind him on 138. This Mason offense, they come in as the third best rushing in the league, but 10th in passing. They average about 150 rushing yards per game, so, but a a stellar good Princeton defense first in the GMC with rushing. See if Mason can get that run game going. That ball nearly intercepted. Ashton Shapes' first pass goes right to the hands of Solomon Farrell. Almost looked like he threw it right to him. Mason lucky to get away with that. And a big thing going into this game is the quarterback situation. Of course, starter Quinn Brown uh, got injured against Oak Hills. Uh, so it's up to Ashton Sheaf if he can get this offense rolling. Sheaf has it killed Jordan in motion. Sheaf hands it off to Tally. He's fighting. He's able to push him up. forward. What a run from Sakai Tally. And that gets the crowd going. Look at that, almost 10 yards being pushed. Huge, huge for Mason. And that's gonna be a first down. Yeah, and one of the Comets' keys as we watch this replay, Tally gets met about two to three yards at the line of scrimmage, but keeps fighting forward. He's small, just five foot five, but very strong. Was has a lot of heart and shows it on that run. Was met by Farrell, just wasn't able to bring him down. Mason gets the first down, see if they can build something off of this. Sheaf hands it off to Tally again, finds a gap, runs a man over. He's still going, getting close to midfield now at the 43. And we might already be seeing a potential, a potential playmaker. Last year, games like this, it was the senior Nick Sailors, especially that, those last couple weeks with putting up six plus touchdowns in back-to-back -back games. And, I mean, watch out for Tally. He's looking really good so far, getting that energy up, which is what this offense needs. He's going to get a bit of a break. Tammy Adesanya, the linebacker, checked in at running back. They're trying him out this week, see if they can get some juice in the run game. Adesanya gets close to the first down marker, but pushed back. This is Second run of the year, first one went for 14. He gets, he gets the first down with forward progress. Let's take a look at this Princeton defense. First overall in the GMC. Uh, just only good things to say really about this team. And one guy who really stands out about this team is the senior PJ Nelson. He's 
just all over the field. Already seen him so far. A pick six versus Lakota West. If if you're Mason and there's a guy you had to circle this week, it's 100% going to be P.J. Nelson. Keep an eye out for number eight on that Princeton defense. Hand it off again to Adesanya. Picks up three or four from that first down run, and Tally will check back into the backfield. You know, what I liked from Adesanya, those, those couple runs, is that he didn't try to make anything, any guys miss or anything like that, just trying to run people over. You know, he's a linebacker trying to get some some carries he has that strength you know a linebacker against a DB and the linebacker running you put your shoulder down linebacker or the guy running the ball is most likely going to win those we've seen a lot of comments running but one thing they haven't been able to do the past few weeks is, through, is get the passing game going Sheath drops back and it's intercepted Princeton on the return it's Kevin Jordan the senior defensive back so all the momentum the Comets had rolling on that drive deflated. Kevin Jordan makes the play for the, for the Vikings. And that's a huge killer. We saw that first pass from Sheaf. Almost threw it right into Princeton's hands. Take a look at this replay. Play action rolls out to his right. Off of his back foot, you just can't force that. And a guy like Jordan, he's going to make you pay. His first interception of the year. One of the best defenders on this Princeton team. Sheaf. Facing pressure, and like you said, Daniel off his back foot didn't have his mechanics totally right there, just forced it. Your first start, you can't force that. Birch, some trickery, and here's the trick play deep for Jordan Houston. And again, his second touchdown pass of the year. We saw it versus we saw it last week, and we're gonna see it again. And we mentioned it earlier this trickery that that Princeton shows, and Mason just not ready for it. That's a great time to dial up the trick play, coming off the Mason turnover, Mason defense. What a throw. Yeah, from, from a running back. From a running a back. Fantastic ball. And we mentioned the backup quarterback, as well as a running back, you're just setting yourself up for trickery. Parker Evans, senior, knocks through the extra point. Vikings take a 7-0 lead. So you're Mason. Something you, you learned from that offensive drive is that you can you can compete. That run game is showing was showing pretty good signs before the interception. It just looks like, you know, your coach Kastner and, and Mr. Little, you're telling him that, you know, you gotta you gotta get this run game going. If you're you're talking to Sheaf, you can't force anything like that. This Princeton defense. They're, they're 3-0 for a reason, because this defense is electric. So we just got to uh, just shy away from those mistakes. Yeah, process was right there. I got the running game going, then dialed up play action. That's the right call. Unfortunately, just wasn't executed properly. So expect the Comets to have a similar, similar game plan here on the second drive. We'll keep an eye to see if it's Sheep out there again. Last week, Caden Ashurst, fellow junior, got the start at quarterback. This week, it's Sheaf. So Comet's still trying to figure out who's really going to take over for Quinn Brown. Let's see what Mason can do. Charlie Raymond. And Brandon Dunn back to receive the kick. Dunn will let it drop out of bounds. So Comet's going to start with good field position after that penalty. So, you're Mason, you, you got a taste of what this defense is like. You know, we, we've already said it a couple of times, the pass game, it's gonna come slow. You can't, you probably gotta start with a couple screens, maybe a slant over over the middle, but just nothing long and outside. That's, Princeton's gonna make you pay for it. And the thing is, it was Kevin Jordan, it wasn't PJ Nelson, don't let, don't let that interception take away from how good these other players are for Princeton. And yeah, Daniel, you said, you know, stay away from the middle of the field where PJ Nelson is, but it's gonna be tough. You've got rangy corners and safeties like the Vikings have. And it is Sheaf back out there. Tally at running back. Gotta see if he can regroup after that. Bunch formation to the left. Get a whistle. You know, your chief, we say it's his first start. You gotta see how he can respond after that. A lot of a lot of guys, they get a 
they throw, they make a mistake like that, and they just don't let it get out of their head. It's probably something that Kastner told them right after is, it's a mistake, it happens, this team's really good. You gotta just gotta let it go, short memory. short memory, and move on to the dish drive. Sheaf, ready to take the snap. Looks left, facing pressure, he's gonna tuck it, and is gonna be able to get just in front of the line of scrimmage, picks up maybe a yard. Yeah, good pursuit by Princeton. Almost looked like a couple QB spies on the play. And, you know, your sheaf as well. You're not, you're not really going to be able to run on this defense either. It's a lot of a lot of greats about this defense. There's not a lot of holes, unfortunately, for a struggling offense that, like Mason, only averaging about nine points a game. They got to they gotta figure figure something out. Kill Jordan, the tight end, checks in. Sheath hands it off to Tally. He's running hard, but only able to get about a yard. And there's some extracurriculars going on. No flag. GMC rivals are gonna expect, expect some emotion. As well as the close game last year, it's a, it's a heavy rivalry. Um, Mason and Princeton for a long time. Yeah, that game last year came down to the wire. And Princeton, we were uh, that game was at Princeton. I was up in the box call on that one. Princeton did not expect to lose that game, and you know that's been in their memory ever since. So this team is hungry to get revenge. Defense pressing the receivers, trips to the left. Sheaf rolls out to the left, and he's Ooh. facing heavy pressure brought down by P.J. Nelson. Who else? He's got offers from multiple Power 5 programs, including Michigan, Michigan State, Boston College, Illinois, Kentucky, and you can see why. You can, you can just keep he going on. Straight there, yeah. It's his fourth sack of the year, four and a half to be exact. He just flies all over the field. If you, he figures out where that ball is, he's gonna, he's gonna be there and he's gonna make a play. Comets forced a punt, and that is a rough one. Quinn Brown. He's been, he was the starting quarterback to start the year, had a shoulder injury, but he's still able to punt. If that was not the play he would have liked. Yeah, kind of easing him back into the action, hoping in the next couple of weeks they can get him back. Yeah, hoping he can get back to the tight end, which he played predominantly last year. When his brother was the quarterback. Yeah, when his, when his brother Larson was throwing the ball. But unfortunately, Quinn Brown's season throwing the ball is most likely over. It's really unfortunate with it with the almost uncertainty at what the quarterback position was gonna look like. You, so you found a guy like Brown who could run the offense, but it's football, injuries happen, and you know it's up to these two guys now to see who can step up, who can take command of this offense, because at the end of the day, some, someone's gotta do it. Yeah. Birch hands it off. A jet sweep, and amazing pursuit from Mason gets him way behind the line of scrimmage. Jordan Fitzpatrick, the junior receiver, took that jet sweep, but waited a little too long to make the decision on where to cut, and Comets defense made it pay. Forced a big tackle for loss, pushing him back six yards. Yeah, we mentioned this Mason defense, second in the GMC in rushing, only allowing about 81 per game. An amazing pursuit. Ryan that was Davis. Ryan Davis. All that ball, that incredibly. Birch tucks it, tricks the Mason defense, breaks through his first tackle and gets all the way to the 45. Able to gain all of that lost yards back and some. Mason, they just gotta be ready. You know, you have a huge play like that against this offense like Princeton, you can't let them, you can't let them regroup. Four down territory for the Vikings at the 35 yard line. Third and five, but expect them, they don't get it to still go for it on fourth. Birch has it, dumps it off to Hambrick. And it's Ryan Davis again trying to make the tackle. Hambrick breaks free, could be very close to the first down marker. Pushed out of bounds by Preston Estora and Estuesta saves the first down. Fourth and short. Vikings offense going to stay on the field. Didn't work last drive, but you know you got to like the aggression with how good this offense has been. Nice stiff arm on that replay by Hambrick. The sophomore running back. We talk a lot about guys who 
are going to be future stars in a GMC. Last year was guys like Taylon Fisher of Fairfield and Eugene Harvey of Sycamore. It's this backfield for Princeton. And Birch holds on to it in the read option, but Comets identify it and they force another fourth down stop. They've got the energy again. They were ready for it. It's Noah Dowers again, the second time being in the backfield, blowing up that, that option. So this defense is already stepping up already a lot better than last week. Yeah, last week they were put in some tough spots, a couple turn, a couple costly turnovers from the Comets, and then things kind of just got out of hand. But so far, defense is stepping up against a very good Princeton offense. Chief coming out for his third drive. Mason still rolling with him. Wonder if we do see Ash burst a little bit, maybe in the second half, depending on how the rest of this game goes. Just under three minutes here left in the first. Calling Billhorn in motion. Sheaf drops back, clean pocket. Has a lot of time. Finds Greer, but passes a little low. <laughs> Jamie and Olverson was able to get some pressure at the very last second and force the inaccurate throw. Yeah, pass intended for Braden Greer. Greer last year, three receptions for 41 yards. He was, he was Larson Brown's favorite target. So far this year, it hasn't exactly gone his way. Still only a couple weeks into the season. Yeah, this whole receiving group has had a tough start to their year. Greer only four receptions, 31 yards on the year. Blevins and Billhorn, the lone guys with touchdowns in this receiving group. But it just feels like we're waiting for a Braden Greer breakout game Absolutely. anytime soon. The Comets really could use one today. See if, see if Sheaf can just settle down a little bit. We saw that play. He had a pretty clean pocket, got rushed there towards the end. But you know, you got a you got a you got a pretty good group of receivers. You know, Blevins, Greer, Billhorn. It's not a it's not an untalented group. This Mason team, yeah, a little all, sneaky, all underrated starters from last year. Yeah, this is just where Sheaf, a little inexperienced, and making his first start. And you know those nerves got to be yeah. flying around. Trying to get comfortable. He'll take the snap. Billhorn once again in motion. Handed off to Taylor. And a big hit from Andrew Wells coming out of the secondary. But Taylor's still able to get five yards, third and five now. Wells, one of the leading tacklers for this Princeton team. 24 on the year, has forced a fumble on the season. And he's only a sophomore, too. We talked about this young offensive uh offensive team but on defense as well this team is they're they're going to be good for years to come yeah nelson a junior but then a lot of these other guys andre parker andrew wells sophomores very young vikings defense chief takes it play action the bubble to Braden greer off target just a lot of miscommunication so far and you know that's, and you know that's something that Coach Kastner was probably really trying to hit home in practice this week. You know it's a new quarterback. You got to get those connections going. Just so far, Mason hasn't been able to do that. So Brown comes back on for a second punt, hoping a little better than last, and it is drives Princeton back, returned. Donovan Favors gets it, and Quinn Brown, much better punt there. That's more of the kick he was hoping for when he returned to the field. Now Vikings have a long way to go on this next drive with two minutes and eight seconds left in the first quarter. It's the best field position that this defense has had so far, and they've been able to do exceptionally well with you know, the first drive starting in their territory and last Two drive. Drives that have started inside Comet territory, they've been able to prevent points. So, when we still haven't seen a ton of Birch throwing, it's well, it's really been the running back Hambrick off that one, that one pass. He gets Hambrick a handoff. Takes it and gets stuffed right around where he started. 
picks up two yards after the push. Tackled by number 17, Ryan Davis. We hear that name a lot. Yeah, Davis having himself a bit of a breakout game so far. Something He's splitting this team time in the, at linebacker, but with Adesanya playing some offense, that's opening up some snaps for Ryan Davis. He's making the most of it so far. Still waiting to see the, the sophomores, John Hendricks and Juan Bates so far. More yes. trickery. And a nice tackle once again Estua. from Mason. That's yeah, number nine. Estua, so. Takes down Jordan Fitzpatrick. SOS, he's been all over the field making play after play. A lot of guys stepping up so far for Mason. And it's, it's really what they've needed. Trying to get the energy going for the common sideline, come fans. Beach theme for the Black Hole student section. So we just tally under a minute left here in the first quarter. So far, you're seeing a lot of good from this Mason defense. You, know, you hope this offense is getting, getting some motivation on the sideline. And we're going to get a timeout from Coach Andre Parker for Princeton. Daniel, third and five here in your own territory. Probably not four down, probably not a four down situation. If you're Coach Parker, what are you dialing up for, for D'Angelo Birch, David Hamburg in this, this Princeton offense? I think you go back to that option. I mean, it's been it's been a little inconsistent so far, but all season it's been what's working for them most. You give Birch the option to hand it off or keep it, and you can see he does a great job of selling the fake too. But I mean, this Mason defense, they've been blowing up the option as well. We've seen, we've seen a lot of guys get there in the backfield and, and disrupt it. So I wonder if that timeout, Princeton's on their heels a little bit here on offense. Noah, Noah Dower is one of the main guys. You see him on the edge, closest to the screen. And they're gonna line up in that shotgun formation, right? First takes a snap. And he finds his target if it's the first down, but flag in the backfield. Brought down by Kyle Wilson. Landon Myrie, sophomore receiver. There's another flag. We talk about how Mason, or not Mason, Princeton, they get penalized a lot on offense. And this call might come back to, to hurt him. Still discussing what the call is. Most likely a holding is what you see a lot in situations like this. So discussing 29 seconds left here in the first. One of the this first. One on the comments. It's on the comments. It's on the. It was on the. D'Lo Birch took a big hit as he got oh. the ball out to Landon Myrie. Oh, you can't afford that. Mason cannot afford for the dumb penalties. Can't rough the passer. And all of a sudden, you went from good territory, almost forcing a fourth down. Now Princeton is on a roll here in Mason territory. Gonna hand it off. Hands it off to Hambrick. He's still moving along, getting up to the 35. Hambrick, he's not gonna go down on the first, on the first tackle we've already seen. He's. He's gonna keep going. What you love to see from, especially a sophomore, playing in at 185.10, nicknamed Lil Dave, going around the high school. Birch keeps it, brought down immediately by Malachi Reed. Okay. Malachi Reed, one of the, the few returning guys from this offense, seven, seven solo tackles on the year, two tackles for loss. That's gonna bring us to the end of the first quarter. Princeton Vikings leading the Comets seven nothing, have the ball in Comet territory. We're gonna take a quick break and be back with you for all the second quarter action.
you doing in there? What's that? Oh. I wouldn't do that. What are you doing? What are you looking for? <laughs> I'm surprised how good the defense is. We're back here. Birch in the backfield. Handed it off to Tino Brown Freeman. But did not do enough to get the first down. Comments get the stop. Looks to be his first carry of the season. The only guys really running the ball so far is Hambrick and Birch. Hambrick three touchdowns on the year, Birch one. We talked about how how much uh, Birch loves to run the ball, almost more rushing attempts than passing. It's gonna be fourth and short. They're gonna keep the offense out on the field once again. Birch. And the shotgun. Has Brown Freeman in the backfield with him. Myrie. Not gonna get a timeout. Yet. Vikings. Coach Parker calls second timeout of the half. And every time it's been fourth down for Princeton, they've kept the offense on mostly because it's always been fourth and pretty short. But it just shows how confident they are in this offense. And I mean, so far, Mason's done a perfect job of stopping the fourth and short game. This defensive line generating great pressure. And, and you can just tell that they've been they've been waiting for the option all week. We talked, you know, we talked so much about how how guys like Tyler Dalton, Noah, Noah Dowers have been swarming in the backfield. And especially Dowers. You gotta give you gotta give that guy his flowers right now. Yeah. Containing super well and being fourth down, it's a perfect time for the option. I wouldn't expect them to run another pass with Hambrick, but you know, anything, anything's possible. Birch and Hambrick. Birch takes the snap, drops back facing pressure, steps forward, and finds his man, Antonio Hunter with the first down and a little bit more, now to the 25. Hunter, one of the top receivers for Princeton. Eight receptions, 37 yards on the young year. And Princeton missing one of potentially their starting receivers with a sophomore, Caleb Miller, uh, standing in at a 6'4 frame. Yeah, and their Vanderbilt commit, Dorian Williams. So One of the best guys in the GMC. They've had guys like Hunter step up in his absence. Birch stepping forward, but takes a big hit from Kai Wolfwood. Huge, huge sack from Wolfwood. And that's going to be his first sack of the season. Birch looks like he was dialing up something, something deep. But Kai able to just take him down. Fumbles it. And Mason got it. Mason falls on the ball. And it's Kai Wolfolk once again just made the sack. Noah Dowers gets in there as the handoff happens. And Wolfolk slides in. Comments, that is the momentum swing they needed. Yeah, you want to talk about momentum. This defense has just shown up to play so far. I don't think we've seen Princeton have this much trouble on the offense, offensive side of the ball so far. You got all that momentum, you have this home field. It's just a matter of time before this offense starts clicking. And she in back. once again. Jordan. Tally takes it, runs through Nelson, picks it up. About Tally. six yards. Tally, he's just been running hard all game. That's what you love to see from the new running back for Mason. Senior. Tally's provided a great boost to this run game. 
It's near his 30th rush of the season. Caden Asher checks in on this play. His first snap. Again, hands it off to Tally. Tally's He's got, got room. some room. Barrels down to the 40 yard line. And the Comets got the chunk play they needed. They're a sideline fired up after the fumble. The big run from Tally. So we'll check out, get a breather. There's the first big play that Mason's been looking for. A huge run from Tally. He's been commanding this offense so far right now. Jaden Smith checking in at running back. We're gonna get a watch it. Just a well blocked. Kale Jordan and then Tally. All he needed was a little bit of open space. Uses his speed. And a nice Smith once again. And a nice Comets run, run it on first down. He only gets a couple yards. Nice job by Tally to bounce out to the outside. A lot of times running backs will just try to, you know, just rush up the middle, see whatever they can get. But you know that ball carrier vision, just able to bounce it out, has so much room. And Mason, for the first time tonight, they're in Princeton territory. Smith tried to bounce that last run outside. Princeton is able to bring him down. Once again, it's Ashurst and Smith in the backfield. Looks like maybe a little flip. Three in motion to the right. Nick Maines in at tight end. Ashurst hands it off to Smith. He's got a lot of room on the left side of the field. Brought down by Nelson. And that's why he's one of the highest, most highly coveted recruits in the south in Southwest Ohio. Tracks down Smith there, what could have been a big play. Yeah, incredible speed on the outside from Nelson. We've talked so much about him already and how just a freak of an athlete that he is. Mason almost able to get to bounce that out. Smith able to the outside. Got a few. Wish he could have gotten a better, maybe a better angle. But you know, we'll take what you can get right now and that'll make it second second and about medium Let's see if they see if they want to throw the ball Sheath with. back in rolling out right and he finds his man Chase Blevins working for the sideline dives forward gets to the five comments are in the red zone there. Seen a little bit of Ashurst, a little bit of Sheaf on the stride, but it's working out for the Comets. They've got something going. And Sheaf, there is a sigh of relief that he gets right there. Huge pass. We had a couple bad throws, but beautiful throw right here. And Blevins, great job being able to stay in bounds. Mason now in the red zone, but there is a flag. Flag was thrown. He saw the replay was thrown just after Blevins caught it. Kastner is set. It's on the comments. I hate to see a reaction like that from the head coach. Looks like this is going to be coming back. But either way, amazing play from Mason. Certainly kills some of the momentum. In a place like that, Blevins was wide open. Curious to see what the call is. Flag was thrown, but there was really no players in sight. So they got to push back 15 yards. Did we, did we see what that call was? Yards. Still waiting on the official announcement, but it looks like the ball can be placed at the 45. But either way, that's a big sigh of relief for, for, uh, for Ashton Chief. You know, he had those. It's offensive pass interference. That's not a play you see a lot. And if you were wondering why Chase Blevins was so open, it's because of that. A little bit of contact, gets the call, pushes him back. It's a big deflator. Really back to the 51, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. That is a tough break. Yeah, you go from a first and goal around the 10 to back at midfield, back almost into your territory. But if Mason, this, this drive, they've looked really good. If they're able to keep that going, you know, hopefully, hopefully they do. Yeah, you want to be positive on how that play went, use that as momentum, but it's really tough to focus on it when you catch a break like that with the penalty. Just hope they can get some points out of the shot. Chief takes the snap, of course, the throw facing a lot of pressure, just barely gets the ball out. And it's going to be called dead. Nice job to just spike it. Don't, don't allow a fumble. A ton of pressure from the Princeton defensive line. And let's take a look at this replay. Two guys come free. It's Kylie Jarrett 
junior defensive end. And Micah Cottrell coming in as well. This Another senior. flag thrown. Return by Hunter. He's got some room down the right side of the field. It's just Hunter and Brown. Oh, Runner's this, uh-oh. And Antonio Hunter's gonna take it to the house. Now there was a flag thrown at the beginning of the play. But. And there's the speed of Antonio Hunter. Great wide receiver, he had that, had a couple catches earlier. He's been the return guy all year. Able to bounce back the outside, great blocking. There's number 23 in front of him, able to get Brown out of the way. And that's just that's just textbook returning that it's hard, it's just hard to defend. Andrew Wells on on the blocking there, setting it up. Flag got picked up. So Princeton, what a swing of momentum. Comments looked like they were gonna be putting some points on the board. Now it's 14-0 Vikings. If that extra point's good. Just a worst case scenario turn of events for Mason. Really, really couldn't have gone any worse for Mason those last couple of plays, but you you established you established a bit of an offense that last drive. And you know it's great to see. You just hope you know you got seven minutes left, you have a lot of time. Just the run game that's been working with Tally. You keep that going. You Try and keep on, you know, pushing Chief into some situations, get a couple short passes. You know, this Mason offense, they're, you know, we've already said it, but it feels like they're bound to get going. Yeah, now just, they, had, they were going to have the ball at the five yard line. But first and goal, offensive pass interference pushes it back, and then Antonio Hunter makes the big play. Comet sidelines totally deflated. Seven minutes left in this first half. This skill group for Princeton is something you just can't overlook. It's it's why they're undefeated right now. They have one of the best, some of the best receivers, running backs in the GMC. And you have a guy like a guy like Hunter who can just take it back to the house like that. That's it's hard to defend. Charlie Raymond and Brandon Dunn back to return for the Comets. So you hope Mason can get some sort of good, a good return here. Maybe just a touchback, see what can happen. You gotta set this offense up for success. Cole Campbell kicking off for the Princeton Vikings. Turn in the end zone by Dunn to take the touchback. Start with the ball at the 20 yard line, 80 yards to go. So, yeah, we'll see, likely to see a lot of handoffs again to Tally. We haven't seen Chase Blevins run the ball much. He's gotten a workload of carries so far this season. See what see what Mason dials up here because you know every drive every drive has been better you know they've seeing seeing bits of improvement Sheaf back out there again see what see what the comments dial up Sheaf three receivers on his right tally to his left fakes the handoff he's got to run it brought down quickly by who else but Walker. Nelson, excuse me. Nelson, his third, third or fourth tackle of the game already. You gotta love, gotta love the form going, hitting low. You know, when I when I played, that's something my dad would always always say, hit low, because I mean they're not gonna break a tackle if you grab his legs. Yep, and that's exactly what happened. Stopped right in his tracks. Sheaf now. Extra protection on the right side. Hands it off to Tally. Tally bounces outside. He's got some blocks. He's running free. Breaks his way for the first down. A little bit of a delayed handoff, but it works in Mason's favor. And we've, just, we've seen a lot of trips from Mason so far this game. Three guys on the right. On the right side seems to be their formation. Tally going to check out. 
once again. But this run game, we mentioned a lot. It's been working so far, and you're hoping that it can help set up the pass game. Adesanya and it running back. Chief hands it off to Adesanya. He gets maybe a yard. Nice pursuit from, from Princeton. Farrell on the tackle, 11 total this season, three tackles for loss with the senior. And this defense, it is pretty young, but it does have its well share of seniors. You know, Farrell being one of them, as well as guys like G Gino Neo Smith, Kevin Jordan. A well balanced team. And Caden Ashburn is going to check in once again. He's going to hand it off. It's maybe a couple. Every time that we've seen Ashburst in the game, it's been handoffs. Wonder if we see him throw a little bit. Chief checks back in. I guess Mason trying to settle Ashburst into, into the game a little bit. Maybe in the second half we see him start getting some attempts, but it looks like they trust Sheaf with with the pass game right now. Trips once again, three guys out to the left, running back to Sheaf's left. Sheaf rolls out and gets Chase Blevins for the first down, squeaks out of bounds, 4.15 now. Perfect throw from Sheaf. That's the second time we've seen it on the out route that first time to Chase Blevins, but got called back. Nice Great. job being able to roll out to his left. And and Blevins being able to squeeze past the defender getting the first down. See, what well, that play was made passable by some great pass blocking from Sakai Tally, picking up the blocker and a running back pass protection. One of the more unnoticed parts of the game, but it's critical and right there sets up a big play for Blevins. So Mason around midfield now. Sheaf hands it off to Tally. And he's met in the backfield by Logan Brown, the junior defensive tackle. Yeah, Logan Brown, number 99. One tackle for a loss, half a sack on the season. He's one of the, one of the main guys here in that front seven. Making plays once again. Mason, you're at midfield. Every drive, we've seen Mason make improvements, whether it's breaking out a couple of big runs, Sheaf looking more comfortable, throwing the ball. And you're at, you're at a point where you gotta start, you just gotta start ending the driving points, whether it's three, you have the sophomore kicker, Max Gokul, who's looked phenomenal this year. Try to get into range for him. Sheaf running, he's got some room, nice spin. Get close to the first down marker. We've seen Sheaf have a design run a couple of times. So maybe be holding his forearm a little bit, but it looks Asher's to be okay. Check in. Third and one for Mason. He said Asher's coming back in. And you know, like we've mentioned, every time Asher's has checked in, it's been it's been a run. You wonder if maybe the offense dials up something different here. Tally in the backfield. I have a feeling it's gonna be a run here. How nice. And he fumbles the snap. Tally falls on it, but loses about five or six yards. And might, Comets might be forced to punt. Just a disaster play on third down. Really couldn't have gone any worse. Ashurst probably fighting some, some nerves. Bad snap gets under his legs. Lucky that number 44, Gino Neosmith, didn't fall on it. And like you said, that's going to force Mason to punt once again. Pretty disappointing, you got two minutes and about 20 seconds left here in the first half. Had a chance to maybe get into field goal range for Gokul. It doesn't look like they're in a fake, a punt fake territory. Just pin them, hopefully around the inside the 10. Brown kicks it off. Return by the dangerous Antonio Hunter around the 15 yard line, he took the last one all the way to the house. Yeah, Mason there brought down pretty quickly. Mason does a nice job being able to pretty much circle 
Hunter around three guys, take him down really easily. Minute, minute and 54. We'll see what this Princeton team can do. Already up two scores, seeing if they can make it three going into halftime. It will be Mace, it will be Mason football going into the second half. As of course Princeton started out with that long kick return. Birch passes to Hambrick. Makes a couple tacklers miss. He's gonna get close to the 30 yard line. See, did he get the first down on that? It looked pretty close. He reached that the ball at the last second. You know, it depends on where they spot this, but some laundry on the field. That play can be called back. It's been a lot of laundry so far for this Princeton offense. Swing it out to the swing it out to the right side. You really hope that the, the corners are able to contain. Just that time they weren't. Lucky for Mason, they're able to bring it back. It's gonna be holding on Princeton. So the Comets right now could really use a turnover. They opened up their season against Gahana Lincoln at home, got a safety on the first drive. Uh, Hibbett fumbled a couple drives ago. So right now here with Princeton backed up, here's a chance. They hand it off. Brought down quickly by Dowers and Reed. And Kastner gonna call timeout. Minute 37 and now. So it looks like Mason might be able to get another chance on offense. Great job of pursuit from the defense. He said Dowers and Reed able to get in. Take a look at this. Hambrick tried to bring it back inside, but Mason right there doesn't get back to the line, line of scrimmage. Dowers facing a block from a tight end there. And just you can't have you can't have Noah Dowers one on one, but with a tight end, he's gonna win that every single time. And with fights through the, the through the block and gets the tackle there. With how good of a game Dowers is having, like you said earlier, it's almost like a breakout game. He, you can't, yeah, you can't put it, you can't put a tight end on him like that. He's gonna make you pay. And now it's now starting long for this Princeton offense. See if they can make something happen. Here Mason gets a stop, and hopefully the offense comes back on. It's a little little under two minutes left. And Dowers really needs to step up on this drive as Liam McManus is on the sideline. He's their, their senior defensive end. They've counted on a lot this season. So Chris Ajibawa and Noah Dowers can be counted on to fill in. And right now you just can't let anything downfield. You're just gonna hand it off. It's Dowers with another <laughs> tackle in the backfield. He's been unstoppable the last Have a play. half. Have a half the junior, the Dowers. He's just been in the backfield pretty much every play. And that's gonna force Princeton to punt the ball deep in their own territory. So Mason might have a chance to get the ball around midfield. Yeah, another, another timeout called by Kastner ahead of this third and long play. But you know, unless we've seen Princeton break a couple plays, but right here, probably just want to play it safe and try to keep the Comets, push them back a little bit, not give them great field positioning with a minute to go. Because Comets won't have any timeouts left on this off upcoming offensive possession. Comets. Vikings break the huddle. It's gonna be third and long. It's the whole, the whole plan right now if you're Mason is just don't let anything pass you. No, no red and white should get past any of those safeties. You right, should well, be fine. Preston Estuesta playing a key role here. Malachi Reed nearly gets Birch down and now Hambrick one on one with Cooper gets brought down. Princeton calls up the screen, doesn't work. This Mason defense, they just had everything. They just had an answer to everything Princeton did that drive. And going into the half, that's that's perfect for this defense. Every drive, they've just gotten better and better. And Mason gonna call their last timeout. So it's likely to be no timeouts for this offensive drive. Take a look at this replay. 
almost getting and Birch in the end zone. John Hendricks that made the initial stop. Yeah, the big sophomore D lineman making plays in space. He was excited about it. Yeah, the two the two sophomores on the line, John Hendricks and Juan Bates, you know, being a sophomore myself, I get to know these guys. Hendricks, he's he's a hard worker. You know that guy, he's gonna bring it every single day. He breathes football. So he gets he gets to make a big play like that on varsity in front of your home crowd. You know, be excited. Waiting for waiting for Bates to possibly make a play. Both guys waiting for their first sacks of the year. But those are two guys that the next couple of years in the GMC, they're, you're gonna have to look out for them. Number number 92 and number 94. You, 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 won't, you won't be forgetting those numbers anytime soon. And Micah Cottrell. Almost that punt blocked. Wound about the 50 yard line. Brandon Dunn just gonna take the fair catch. Comets officially will get it at the 45. And what a punt. In your own end zone, you're able to get it past your own that was territory. That all air yards too. I know, no, no rolls or anything like that. It's an amazing punt, all Princeton could have asked for. So, a minute and 16 left. You gotta get, you gotta get something, something rolling on offense. The main thing is just get at least three going into half. Get some sort of momentum. You get the you ball. Get points. You get the ball going into the second half. So, if you're just able to, and like we said, Gokul, he's been great this season. Get it into range. It's going to be Sheaf again at quarterback. Sheaf takes the snap. He runs. He's got some room, but can't break free of the tackle. Common's got to hurry up to the ball. No timeouts left. Been in 10. Offense. You see Sheaf. Common's keep the same 11 on the field. Just now take under a minute left. Sheaf takes it. Faces the pressure on the left. Gets the ball down. Incomplete. Targeting Chase Blevins. Chase Blevins so far seems to be his favorite target. He's had two pretty big plays, one of them being that that catch down to the 10, unfortunately called back, all the way back to right around where Mason is right now at midfield. So third down, the last thing you want to do is give Princeton the ball. And we've already seen their trickery and their their punt team just can't can't allow just can't allow the ball to be in the hands of the white and red they're going to put 53 back on the clock Let's see what the comments style up here chief in the shotgun takes the snap hands it off to tally tally nearly picks up the first down but brought down quickly <laughs> I feel like you gotta go for it right now. Clock running, 40 seconds. Yeah, not much risk here. You know, Princeton won't have a lot of time. But Vikings gonna call a timeout. They want really? to make Coach Kastner think about it. Really? You know, I, I can't, can't blame them. You know, it'll leave if if the Comets can't convert on fourth down, it leaves about 30 seconds left on the clock. So you know, there's a chance you can get in field goal range uh, with a quick play. Yeah, and we saw a one play a one play drive earlier in the game when Hambrick threw the touchdown pass to Jordan Houston. So Vikings are confident in their quick game offense. Yeah, it's two straight games where Houston has caught a touchdown from Hambrick. And you know, it feels like they get the ball again. You need a deep ball, put it in the hands of Hambrick. He's been, for, for a running back, the way, the way he's just putting the ball right on the money yeah, is it was, it was incredible. Throw. Incredible. Got to give him credit for it. Now Comets trotting back out there. Kai Wolfold in on offense. We got an interesting formation here. It's McManus and Wolfold in the backfield. So they might just push. And Ashton Sheaf is in at tight end. Comets are going to oh, the Comets are going to punt it. Punt in. Really? Punt on fourth and short. It's not a Comets fake have either. Two number nine. So mistake. Sheaf for Esto Esta. Brought down pretty quickly, so Comets going to punt away and trust their defense to take them into this into halftime. You know, just a 14-point deficit. 
Yeah, the way the the way the defense has been looking these past couple of drives should be no problem. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not putting out an announcer's jinx right now. I've been a victim of that a couple times last year. But 30 seconds left, unless there's some trickery again like we saw a couple of drives ago. I wonder if Princeton maybe just needs the ball, takes it in the half. You don't want to risk anything. You already had a fumble earlier. So likely to just play it passive, take it into the half. Yeah, Princeton in the victory formation here, just gonna take a knee, bring us in. So it's been a competitive game so far, but a couple key mistakes from the Comets, most notably an offensive pass interference in the red zone. And then two very quick touchdowns. I mean, if that's, but that's what it's been, it's big plays. It was Antonio Hunter returning a punt for a touchdown, and it was David Hamburg finding Jordan Houston for a 40-yard touchdown on a flea flicker. It's been We're going to take a look at some of the re highlights earlier. Sakai Tally has been leading the way for the Comets, running violently, as we see right there. And here's another one. Tally definitely going to be counted on here in the second half. Preston Sheaf. And then we look at this interception yeah. again. That really costly. Up the game. That really set the tone for Princeton. And then Hambrick on the trick play got Houston wide open. So it's really just been those huge, those big, those big plays We're for. Watch another big play here. I mean, that, not the, not the return for the touchdown here. Chase Blevins. This was the play that the comments are going to be thinking about the entire locker room. But now, here it is. Antonio Hunter jukes past a couple defenders. House call. It's really, it's really just been those big plays that Princeton's been, been up on, and it's just you gotta in the locker room. You, that's probably going to be the big thing of topic is just limit the huge plays and just come back and regroup. Yep, and we're going to take a break for halftime and be back for all of the second half action. Thanks for tuning in to ICRC TV. Thank you. A place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge. To 
make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them when they learn something new and you can just see in their faces. It's, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite. with the next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how we doing? Y'all feeling all right out there? Hello, and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is Ian Walker from One Long Farm and of course, you can always go to the ICRCTV.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how we doing? Y'all feeling all right out there? Hello, and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is Ian Walker from One Long Farm. We just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, you can always go to the ICRCTV.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you.
doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Thank you. A place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. It's a dad, every day is a challenge. To make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them, it doesn't matter how tired you are, you have to try and to teach them. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite. with the next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how we doing? Y'all feeling all right out there? Hello, and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is the Unicorn Crew from Little Long Park. I just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, you can always go to ICRCTV.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. Thank you.
How you doing? Hey, Mason. Hey, Mason. Thank you. A place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Mason. Hey Mason. Hey Mason. Thank you. I find a place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out.
you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those barbecues you plan in detail for your family? Or your daughter's first costume party? It was out of this world. The same way you plan each detail for those moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. It's a dad. Every day is a challenge. To make sure that the time that I have, I spend with them. It doesn't matter how tired you are. You have to try and to teach them. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's... It's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are, that are my favorite. So that leaves us with the next item on our agenda is item number five, opening session. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. If you're out here at the parade or listening, thank you again. Into the end zone, and that is caught by Jaden Wood. Come on now, how we doing? Y'all feeling all right out there? Hello, and welcome to this edition of This is Glendale. I'm Bet Chorus. Hey guys, this is the Unit 1 crew from Little Long Park. We just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And of course, you can always go to the ICRCTV.com. Always a great day when ICRC is involved. Another edition of ICRC bringing the community to you. Thank you. Touchdown was a one-play drive, flea flicker from the running back David Hambrick to the receiver Jordan Houston, and then their second touchdown came 
from a punt return touchdown from Antonio Hunter, the Comets. Defense has been playing really well, which has been those two burst plays. Yeah, the defense has been pretty surprising, I'd say. They look a lot more like the first two weeks from Gahana Lincoln and uh, Oak Hills. A lot of very good rebounds so far from last week. This offense, however, they're still trying to find a rhythm. Uh, the thing is, though, for this offense, every drive they've gotten better. Every drive they've been able to put some sort of a, some sort of a thing together, and they're going to start out with the ball. So we'll see if it's still uh, Shafe coming out, or if maybe they run with Ashburst, the new half, new offense. And the kickoff goes out of bounds. So Comet's going to start with a strong field position at the 40-yard line, 35-yard line from that penalty. You're going to expect to see a lot more. Uh, a lot of runs from Sakai Tally, like we saw in the first half. He looks amazing. It's going to be uh, Sheen coming out in the offense, but Tally right behind him. He looked really good in the first half, and hopefully, you know, this offense is hoping he can produce at that same level. Ashton Sheaf takes the snap. Hands off to Tally. Tally moves right, but he's met immediately. Ball's down on the ground. And it's called dead, and it's Princeton football. One play, Tally fumbles it, and out of nowhere, it's it's re recovered by number seven, the senior Jordan Houston. That's his first recovery of the year. Look at this again. Met right in the backfield and drops the ball. Just loses it, and that's a horrible. Momentum kill for Mason. Their first drive of the game ended in interception, and now their first drive of the second half into the fumble. And Princeton going to start with terrific field position inside the Comet 35. So now Princeton, they might might be able to make this a three possession game. But this Mason defense, they've had answers for D'Angelo Bird, D'Angelo uh, Birch, and Birch hands it off. Back. He keeps on moving. Gets a first down and a little bit more. David Hambrick, the sophomore. It's a big game there. We're going to watch it again. Hambrick just gets a gap and carries some Comet defenders with him for another five yards. So sets up a first down. This defense, they know, they know how good of an option team that Princeton is, but you just got to be able to shut down the run. Hambrick gets it again. Two. He's got a gap, but tripped up by Wolfie. Same play, almost same result. Just a dive up the middle. I have a feeling they're gonna keep on doing that this drive and see if Mason can just get some sort of a of an answer. Birch takes the snap again to Hambrick. He picks up the first down. You have three straight dives, it really sets up the option for Birch to keep it. I have a feeling that's what we might see. Same formation, except this time Birch keeps it, takes it to the left side. So that would, you know, I'm not, I'm not an offensive coordinator or anything, but I think that, that would be my call. Yeah, right here. After a couple run plays, maybe dial up the play action, try to catch the common defense off guard. Two receivers to the left. Birch gonna keep it, and he's met pretty quickly, but able to get a couple yards. Good first down run from D'Angelo Birch. There's, there's the option again that we just talked about. And Mason a little bit better, Liam McNames and the sophomore Juan Bates there on the tackle. So see if they can get some sort of a goal line stand, just force three. Princeton at the six yard line. Birch takes it, hands it off to Hambrick. It's gonna be close. Pushes forward, they're not gonna get it. Now the run stuffer. John Hendricks checks in. Not quite enough for the first down here. Third and two at the three yard line. Potential goal line stand. At the three, the way Hambrick's been running this drive, he's able to get a lot of yards after contact. Birch hands it off to Hambrick. He's got space on the left. 
getting run down and met in the backfield by Charlie Raymond. Excuse me, that's Kyle Wilson, the safety. Kyle Wilson, the senior safety. Going into this game, he's had two, or excuse me, eight total tackles. He's been one of the best guys, especially interception-wise, two interceptions on the season. Just went downhill there, made the big time stop, and now Princeton gonna be forced to kick the field goal. And it's up, and it's good. Very low, low kick, but gets the job done. So nice job by the Mason defense. You allow a couple, couple big runs, but you know at the end of the drive, you only you only let them get three. Yeah, ben don't break there in the comments. Yeah, hopefully we'll see this offense come back on again. It's it's been the same it's been the same plan or same goal pretty much every drive. It's just get something get something started, get some sort of a momentum. Yeah, it's hard to get hard to get momentum in your way when you when you have turnovers like that. Just gotta keep gotta have better ball security and just try to develop a drive. So Comet offense gonna have to trot back on the field. And you know, forget about that fumble on the last drive. And take a little bit of momentum they got from the goal line stand and not allowing a touchdown and, and move forward. Still a lot of time left in this game. Raymond and Dunn back to return. We'll see if we'll see if Mason can get a return of their own. We've seen a a, a a kickoff return and a punt return. One brought for a touchdown, one brought to the opposite 20. So if Mason's able to, you know, most of the kickoffs already tonight have just been touchbacks, but if they're able to give something maybe midfield or even farther, set the offense up really well. Dangerous kick. Returned by Dunn. He makes a man miss. He's running down the sideline. That's a good return. Oh my God. That's the 35. Yeah, it takes it to the 35, one of the first returns we've seen off of the kickoff tonight. And Masons, they're going to get their best field position that they've had all game. He's coming from, from a kickoff. So the run game, it didn't work last drive. But the thing Sheaf, the longer, the more, the more he's been settled into this game, the better his passes have looked. So you wonder if you see the play action and rolling out has been big for Chief so far. Chief takes it. He's going to run. Met quickly by a swarm of Viking defenders. Gets him about a yard. It looked like it might have been an option, but Chief wasn't able to get the ball out. A lot of designed quarterback runs we've seen from Chief so far tonight. It's not a lot of passing. It feels like that really just is what they're missing as of now. In the run game, it's kind of been there, but you got to keep this defense on their toes a little bit. She bobbles the snap, but caught by Adesanya. Disaster averted, but Comet's going to lose a lot of yardage on that play. Almost handed it off to Princeton. That was that was Gino Neo Smith back there in an instant. Nesbeth got there before the handoff blew up the play, but a high snap and Comets lucky to not turn the ball over there. And Kylie Jared as well. Both guys a combined five sacks on the year, 14 tackles for loss. They're used to getting back in the backfield really quickly. Sheaf rolls out, evades a defender, and he's going to find his target on the sideline. Billhorn. And there's, there's a throw. Been looking for it all half. Sheaf able to make a guy, a guy miss. And a nice throw. And that's the best play we've seen from Sheaf so far. Rolls out, facing pressure, makes the man miss. Steps forward, finds Billhorn, who then does a spin move, gets the first down. It's a great play. You can build off that. It's really been the the Ashton Sheep and Colin Billhorn connection this game. 
feels like every time that uh, Sheep, he's been under a lot of pressure when throwing, you find Billhorn, he's gonna bail you out. Now Sheaf takes it, sweeps to Jaden Smith, he rolls, but misses. Runs right into a couple Princeton defenders, so loses several yards there. Just some miscommunication between the quarterback and running back there. Yeah, Princeton was just ready for it. They've had Mason, they've had a lot of the outside kind of sweeps or pitches to the outside. That time Princeton was just ready for it. It's their, they're the number one Russian defense in the GMC for a reason. They only they only allow about 25 rushing yards per game. And that sounds unbelievable, but you know the stats stats don't lie. And they're showing it as of right now that they're not letting anything get to the outside. To Ali in the backfield, Sheaf. Oh, and that pocket collapsed quickly. He's brought down. That's number 17. Oliverson, that's his first sack of the season, the junior. To see, initially had a clean pocket, but then Gino Nesmith, Jamie and Oliverson just got there. She couldn't get the ball out. He had a clean pocket, looked like he was stepping up to maybe get something downfield, he just didn't have enough time. And Mason, they're still getting closer to midfield but see if they can just get something going. Another design quarterback hey. draw. Yeah, that's gonna, yeah, Comet's gonna be forced to punt, get nothing there. And promising Hello. drive, gonna end. A little bit of, a little bit of pushing and shoving after the play, but nothing, nothing big. So Quinn Brown is going to come back out for yet another punt. Each punt, he's looked better that first one, one to forget, but ever since that leg of Brown has been, you know, what it's looked like all season. Quinn Brown back to punt. Get a whistle and I'm dead. So there it is, might be a false start with how early of a whistle it is. Ref's gonna meet around the 45. It's gonna be on Princeton. Thomas had such a poor spot, still gonna have to punt here, but helps out a little bit, gives Brown some more. Some more room to, to get off a nice punt. Kind of back a few more yards, gonna help the defense out. I really hope he's done it already, already tonight. Antonio Hunter. Gotta watch out for Hunter. High snap, Brown loses it. He's gonna run, gonna try to get a punt off, and he just holds it and shucks it. Finds it. So that play could have gone a lot worse. Quinn Brown throwing. At least he not, can throw. Yeah, not something we expected to see the rest of the year, and that might not have been good for the shoulder. The yeah. doctor might not be happy tomorrow, but. Well, it did, did look a little wobbly, but then again, probably wasn't expecting to throw it. It's like an I underhand snap. flick. We'll get a bad snap. That's going to be talked about tomorrow in the film room. Brown able to evade the pressure and then just tosses it as he takes a big hit into the sideline. I, I don't know how he found a receiver there. But it was the last start the ball around midfield. The last effort. Well, hey, maybe, maybe that means he can throw a little bit. I, yeah, I don't, I don't think we expect Brown to be making any more. If anything, any more I think throws. that might signal the end of Brown's punting days more so than the start of anything else. Birch, play action. He's facing pressure from Hendricks. He has to throw the ball at the feet of Antonio Hunter. Mason's done a nice job of keeping Birch out of the pocket. There he tried to stay in, was clean for about a second, but some pressure on the outside. Looked to be number 92, the sophomore John Hendricks from the edge. Wasn't able to get Birch, but he was able to get him outside the pocket, cause him to throw it away. 
this defense once again. Only 17 points for one of the highest scoring teams, Princeton. They average about 30 a game. Get a couple on the handoff to him. Dowers in on the tackle. He's been having such a special game so far. It'll cause third and six for, for the Vikings. Mason trying not field goal range yet. Maybe four down territory. Search takes it. Another play action. He finds Michael Cottrell. Gets it the first down. Cottrell, that's his third reception of the year. He's had two so far for, four, for 41 yards. And when he does get the ball, he gets a lot of yards. Take a look at this replay. Nice play action. Steps up and slant over the middle. Javion Hendricks on the tackle. Nice job to get low and not let anything pass. First and ten. It's again for Princeton. Birch drops back, aiming for the end zone. Intercepted by Charlie Raymond. Comets get the swing of momentum they've been waiting for. And definitely some miscommunication. It looked like it was just him in the out in the end zone. Raymond standing right there. So Princeton looked to be getting the drive, and now all of a sudden it's Mason football again. They'll get the ball at the 20. And Another turnover for Mason. Charlie Raymond, right place, right time. The route, we're assuming was a, was a blown route there, but Raymond takes advantage. Turnover for the Comets, keeps Princeton off the board. Now, we're seeing some floaty toys thrown in the student section. They're excited. It's a black hole, it's a beach theme tonight, and they definitely showed out. And Charlie Raymond gets the belt after the turnover. That belt looks pretty real. It is, it is a real belt. Kyle Wilson got it after winning the Skyline MVP a couple weeks ago. And there's going to be a face mask on this place. Kai Talley brought down Two by the helmet right away. So that's going to be a first automatic first down for Mason. Talked about how how many times Princeton gets penalized. And you know, Mason, Mason, they're at the point where they'll take anything they can get. There it is, a face mask. And on Princeton. And what you're hoping if you're Mason here is that after that, that that turnover, Princeton now starts to fall back and make more mistakes. You know, so we saw a lot of penalties at the beginning of the game. They've cleaned that up a little bit here. But Comets can start taking, taking advantage of these mistakes. They, they, they can get right back in this game. Three minutes, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Only down 17. You know, comeback is still possible. I really want to see Mason try try something wrong. I want to see maybe a deep ball. We still haven't seen much of Raiden Greer so much this season. And we know how good of a deep threat he is. Might have to take a chance. Play action rolling out right. And looking for Chase Blevins. Sticky coverage. I think the Comet sideline wanted some pass interference. And just had to throw it away. Seems every, almost every time that Sheik's been throwing the ball, it's been a play action bootleg to the side. That time doesn't work, and you know Princeton, they've got to be, they've got to be expecting it. You know, there's not much, not much variety, so much for Mason, and you're hoping maybe a little, a little difference in play calls can help. Sheik makes the snap. Again, rolls right, has some protection. Looking deep to Braden Greer. It nearly brings it down. Would have been a catch of the game. There it is, Greer upset with himself. There's the deep ball that we were just talking about. Maybe a little underthrown by Sheaf. And Greer's down. I think he got the wind knocked out of him, trying to bring that ball in. Hopefully Greer's okay as the trainers trot out. Hit the ground kind of hard with it being turf field. Big controversy, especially in the NFL the past couple of years. You hope that's just what it is. Maybe got been knocked out of him a little bit. But you like to you like to see the aggression. Yeah, and it's a great ball from Sheaf. Pump fake, launches it. Greer did everything right until the very end. George Houston got in the way. 
was nice defense. Maybe a little bit underthrown, but you see how close it was to working and Greer able to run off of the sideline. That's huge. You love to see that from a guy who's one of your top receivers on the team. And when he when he's on, he's one of the best in GMC. Finished top five in yards last season with the connection of Larson Brown. So you wonder if Prince, if Mason stays with that sort of aggression because you know just a little under three minutes left in the third quarter, you gotta start you gotta start getting points up on the board. Three possession game. Chief gonna bring the running back up, motion him to the side. Chief pitches it to Tally, but he's met immediately in the backfield. Third down, and now Comets have to punt. And there's a flag thrown after the play. And see who this is on. This could shift the game. See. Tally's helmet came off. That's a probably not a good sign from, for, from Princeton's side. Second time tonight yeah. that we've seen the helmet come off. It's, it's a personal rough, foul. It's called on the Vikings. Oh man, you cannot afford that if you're Princeton. Just about to get the ball back, and you just gave Mason 15 yards in a first down. Officials still meeting here. I think Kastner. Okay, wait. Yeah, waiting to make sure that there wasn't an offsetting penalty. There's not. Comets are moving up to midfield. They catch a big break there. And, you know, we talked about it earlier in this drive. After that, that turnover, how is Princeton going to respond? And getting a right little there, right there. You know, let the emotions get the best of you. You're up 17. You're in control of this game. Those plays can't happen. Good to see Braden Greer back in the game. Looks like it probably just was. Little win knocked out of him. Sheaf hands it off to Smith. He's running tall. And met him in the backfield. Princeton running game once again. We're seeing. You know, you got you got two minutes left. You're probably gonna have to start having more of the having more of those deep shots. You were so close with Greer. We've seen the connection with Billhorn tonight. And, uh, or I'm sorry, Blevins. And that's that's something that Mason will probably need to do again. Just try and throw something up. Ashurst checks in the game. Interesting formation here with McManus and Jordan in at tight end. Jaden Brogdon out left. And Tally falls forward for a solid gain of five. Ash, Ash versus the game, another run. Third and five, we'll see if Asher stays on the field. It looks like he's going to, he takes the play call. He, he hasn't had a chance to throw the ball yet. Had a tough, tough game last week against Hamilton, but played pretty well in the fourth quarter against Oak Hills in week two. Gonna try to build some momentum on this play. See if they trust him enough. Jaden Brogdon. The sophomore out Alone to the left. On the, yeah, outside on the left. He's a great deep threat. See if they maybe give him a shot. And hands it off to Tally. Tally's got room. Breaks to the sideline, pushes forward, gets the first down. And Tally, just so much fun to watch him run the football. Yeah, he, you know. he breaks out to the outside. It's hard to get him down. You know, it's a little smaller for a running back, but that means he's going to be a lot more agile. He breaks a couple tackles. Thanks. Get some help from Brogdon on the block. If you're, if you're a sophomore like Brogdon, wanting to get get some playing time on Friday Night Lights, you need to throw throw some effort on the blocks, and he did right there. Thomas pick up the first down. That's something that's something Kastner's gonna love uh, for film. And Brogdon, he's gonna be he's gonna be a big name for years to come. Only a sophomore right now, but the big frame, he's gonna be good. And rolls out, finds Kale Jordan. Jordan's got some space. Up to the 25, Comets offense, they're rolling. They're Jordan gets it to the sideline with 10 seconds left in the third quarter. There's the first throw from Caden Ashurst, and it's a play action, it's a perfect play call. Princeton, you knew that they were running the ball every time with Ashurst, a great ball on the play action, defender in his with, face. Yeah, with pressure coming, it's an impressive play. So Mason in the red zone, and this time it's not coming back. So we're gonna head to the fourth quarter. Comets driving down the field, trailing the Vikings 17 0. We'll take a quick break and be back with all the fourth quarter action. 
driving Aston Sheep. Looking for Chase Blevins. And it's intercepted by Jordan Houston. He's got room. Brought down at the 30 yard line. So Comets had a great drive going. And big play from the senior Jordan Houston ends the drive. Had him wide open too, just put too much air on it. And he's going to make you pay for that. That's so unfortunate. It's a, such a promising drive. And the Princeton offense going to come back out. Burge threw an interception in the end zone on the Vikings' last possession. Likely to see a, an option here. He's going to keep it on the read option. Falls forward for four or five yard gain. And that's that's such a heartbreaker right there. Mason, they were having their best drive, just connected on a nice pass from Ashurst. And you know it's just it's just a rookie mistake of putting too much air on a ball that you know just needs to have a little more zip. But you know the good thing about making mistakes like that is Chief is gonna learn from it. And you know, if you're gonna look over it on film, he's gonna notice we did wrong in these next couple weeks, it would have improved. And Hambrick brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Tackled by 33, Noah Dowers once again. Got himself a great night. One of the biggest price spots on the team. trying to get the energy going, preparing for a big play here. Birch takes the snap, throws the bubble to Antonio Hunter, and he's brought down immediately Stephen McCalmont. So Comets force the three and out after the interception. Stephen McCalmont, one of the best guys on this defense. 12 total tackles, that'll be number 13. Great job of getting low, evading evading the uh, the blocks and Princes they're gonna have to punt again so there's another three and out forced by the Mason Commons this offense is gonna get another another shot there's still a lot of time left in the fourth done back to return the punt and he's got some room makes a man miss takes a big hit but up to the 40 nice job to get get a little bit of get a little bit of space for the offense. We'll see if maybe after last drive with the nice throw, we might see Asher's get a couple more snaps, look really good on play action, get a replay of this, able to make one guy miss. It's hit hard. Defense, that was Andre Parker, the sophomore, who got him on that. And it is gonna be Asher's. So Asher gets into the game once again. Hands it off to Tally. Tally makes a few of you guys miss. Said that a lot tonight. Just pushing forward after contact. It's four yards. Yeah, he's done a great job tonight of being able to make guys miss, get through, 
get through the line and make something out of nothing, really. Asher is going to stay in. You wonder if you know, only one pass so far tonight, and he, and he has looked good, so you wonder if Coach Little dials something up. Fumbles the snap again, and he's able to get it get it back. It's the second time tonight that that's happened. And we might have a Princeton guy down. Flag on the field. Official discussing it. Sides kind of getting in the way of that snap. We got nine, we got nine minutes left. I was able to pick pick up the ball. Yeah, you're not really able to get much of a handoff there. Asher's gonna stay in the game. Nine minutes left. You have enough time if you get a if you get a um, you get a touchdown this drive. The way the defense has been playing. You know, Mason is certainly not out of this game yet. So maybe maybe a new hand at quarterback can give them a little bit of a little bit of momentum. They're gonna get up to midfield after that penalty. Ashurst under center. Takes the snap. Gets it quickly. The tight end. Slam McManus. Dart to McVeigh's there on the pass. So Asher's two for two on the day so far. Nice job being able to stay in the pocket. Not, you know, no need to go out and try to make something happen on the outside. Just staying in. takes it, hands it off to Tally. Tally with the move right, make, gets one guy down, but only picks up a yard. And Oliver sent a little slow to get up for Princeton. Maybe got about one, but you know, it, might, it might be time to shift away from the run game. 7.45 left. Maybe we see another deep ball. The one from Sheaf was super close. And Sheaf's gonna check back into the game. Three receivers. Jordan in at tight end. Tally in the backfield. Sheaf takes the shotgun. And Tally met quickly. He's brought down by Tylee Jarrett. That's Jarrett, one of the best, one of the best a junior for Princeton. He's been a little quiet in the first half, but the second half, he's been all over the field. That's a loss of five for this deep play. And he just swarms back into the backfield. You know, Tally pretty much has nowhere to go. Chief gets it to Tally on the screen. Third down, room. Tally's moving, got the first down and more. It's another man missing, he's going. All the way to the 20, evading tacklers. There's the offensive play of the game so far. And that could be a game changer. Mason, after it was a huge, huge amount they had to get, Able to get the screen off, you got the three lead blockers. Textbook screen cuts it back inside here on the replay. Makes two guys miss. And Mason, and now it, about a yard away from the red zone. You really gotta make something something happen here. Last time the Comets were in this situation, through an interception, I try to be a little more conservative. Bill Horn in motion. Chief hands it off to Adesanya. He's following his blockers. He's gonna fall forward for about four. It's the most, the most 
rushes we've seen from Adesanya all year. And he's looked pretty promising. You know, no, no huge breakout runs, but he's, you know, he's a lot more of a uh, more of a short distance kind of guy. That you're gonna put, especially if the comments get to about the two or the three yard line. He's trying to manage two wires is a toughie. We've also seen Liam McMains in that situation as well. Tally has it. Can't break free. It's two yards, going to force third and five at the 15 yard line. Brought down by the sophomore, Andrew Wells. The run game is not, it's not exactly working this drive. Asher is going to check back into the game. Here it's it's almost a clear it's almost a clear passing situation. The last couple of runs haven't worked, and from what we've seen tonight from Asher, his his arms look pretty good. Let's see what let's see if they go with him to pass. Asher hands it off again to Tally, and he gets pushed back a lot. That was Jamie and Olverson on the TFL special teams unit checking in just not sure not sure why you run it there it's third third and pretty long you no know, Princeton they've looked good on the run so far push it's back now Max Gogol gonna line up for the field goal attempt He's looked great this season. About a 37 yarder. Good snap, good hold, and he drills it. Through. Had a lot of distance on it too. Would have hit it maybe even 10, 10 yards back. So Mason, they get on the board here 17 to three. You know, the shutout is over three minutes and 38 seconds left. The way this defense has been playing, Mason could easily get a couple more tries on offense. He's just got to contain this Princeton offense. Google gets the comments on the board now. Under four minutes left. They've got to pick things up. Defense needs a quick three and out, and then a few miracles. But kickoff team heads out. I wonder if we even potentially see an onside kick here. You're getting it's into certainly possible, you know, a little early, a little but early, you're, but, but you're down two scores. You might not have a choice. But we've you know, seen if this was me and Matt. I, you know, I think I might be going for the onside kick here. I don't know about you, Daniel. Maybe not me. I'm a little yeah, more conservative. Know, but, but, but four minutes in Madden is not exactly the same as four minutes in you know high school no, football game. A lot different. But yeah. we've we've seen Kastner be aggressive in situations like this on a time where maybe oh, and it looks like they really might. Looking ready for either the onside kick or the normal kickoff. Like it is going to be an onside. An onside. Comets get it. I think that got the distance. Needs to go travel 10 yards before it can be picked up. It looked good. Does but Mason yeah, have no, it? No flag on the field. We're, gonna, we're waiting on an official decision. And there is a flag. It looks like it might not have went to the 10 yards. Officials talking about it. Yeah, Comet defense on the field, so. They're gonna say he didn't get the 10 yards. I think it got eight or nine. Yeah, ref points in the Mason direction. It's illegal touching. Mason did get it, but it just needed it to roll just about another yard. So Princeton, they're gonna get the ball around midfield. Pretty good field positioning. D'Lo Birch in the shotgun. Takes the snap. He hands it off. Tino Brown Freeman picks up a couple yards. And Kastner calls his first timeout. 334 remaining in the game. See if it looks like Mason might start burning their timeouts a little earlier than than most. But you now you are getting to the point. It is a 14-point game, two possessions. You gotta get a stop here and then keep keep the hot hand going on offense. But right now it's just a job of stopping Princeton. Only three points here in the second half. Mason 
has done a great job of getting that Mason, or getting the Princeton defense off of the field. The defense is gonna regroup. You're likely to see a lot of runs either from Birch or from from the running backs. And Hambrick, obviously one of, obviously getting a huge workload tonight. Now Birch Hambrick back in the backfield. Second and seven, Comets. They are gonna hand Can't it off. Can't get Hambrick, he's running forward, he's got space, he breaks free, but tripped up by McCalmont was one step away from a touchdown there. And that that likely would have sealed it if if so. And we got a Princeton guy down. It's Jordan Houston. The trainers are gonna come out. This replay one more time. It's a fake. Able to break a couple tackles. Yeah, missed tackle there and then McCalmont. Oh, that looks to be him short. That looked to be a non- Non-contact injury. Sometimes those are the scariest ones. And just the way he fell, that did not look good. Houston, one of the best, the best receivers, not only for Princeton, but in the GMC. He had that huge touchdown earlier. And it's just something that you hate to see. You really hope that he's okay. That'd be a huge loss for Princeton. Getting checked out by the trainers, hope, hoping for the best for him. Three and a half minutes still left in this game. Comets trying to finish this one out and then next week look ahead to their matchup at Fairfield. Those two teams have had some excellent games in the past few years. Played each other in the playoffs two years ago. Fairfield knocked Mason out. And then last year, Mason got their revenge on senior night with a big 30 point victory. Fairfield led by their star quarterback, Talon Fisher. Who leads the GMC in rushing yards right now. Yeah, he's one of the one of the top recruits in Ohio. He's been playing since he was his true freshman there. I think Talon Fisher is a really good comparison of what Birch can be. Absolutely. In the I future. think Birch has that kind of ceiling. Especially in this offense surrounded by a lot of great playmakers like Houston. Houston able to get off the field. It's great to see. Hambrick takes it and he's just pushing forward. He's really coming alive. And when you're up in a one or two score game trying to kill some clock, the running back has a super important role and Hambrick is, is definitely doing his job right now, fighting for that extra yardage. About three minutes left. You're just expecting, you're just expecting Princeton to run off the rest of this clock. No need. No need for any throws. You know, you've done all you can, especially already in field goal range. The way the way Hambrick's been running the ball tonight, being able to make guys miss, drops the snap. Birch is able to fall on it, though. That could have been huge if Mason was able to fall on it. We've seen a couple of drop snaps so far tonight. And from both sides. Both sides. So that's... It's a huge sigh of relief for another timeout called. Head of this third and six. Two thirty-seven left. Princeton obviously in field goal range. The chance to make it once again a three possession game. And the way the way special teams has looked now should be right now would be E pretty much easy distance for the kickers. But, you know, Princeton, if Princeton's able to get a first down here, you you wonder if that might, that might be a sealer. Yeah, definitely come back looking out of reach for the comments, but still trying to get the ball back, get some points on the board. Third and six is a critical play. Pins it off to Hambrick. Hambrick brought down. So Comets gonna force a field goal attempt here. They're gonna get the ball back. With a little over two minutes left in the game. And you really are at the point when Mason does get the ball back. The handout, the, the run game has gotta see a little bit of a decrease. You gotta 
have to go to the air attack. And Brain Greer almost had that big play. Chase Blevins had a big play called back by a penalty. And the Comets have had some success in the passing game. Especially with uh, Colin Billhorn. And he's been, he's been one of the biggest bright spots in the passing game. But like you said, Braden Greer, such a, such a close opportunity. We're still waiting to see a big play from him. You know, of course, had that huge touchdown at the end in the playoffs last year versus Sycamore. You know, of course, a touchdown this next yeah. drive wouldn't wouldn't win the game, but it, at least at least you got to get something going in the next week. You know, you might you might be at that point where it's like, it, yeah, comeback is probably out of question, but you just want to get something to yeah, build some momentum. You're keeping it close with the best team in the GMC, Princeton. Remember, knocked off Lakota West, who's one of the best teams in the city. G reigning GMC champs, they beat them by 15, held them to a only a field goal. Comets are in a similar spot, but Princeton keeping their offense out there for fourth down. You know, can't really hurt to, to keep the team out there. Try to pick up the first down and close this game out. Yeah, if you don't get it, then Mason. Yeah, it's got to travel position. a long way, anyways. Wonder if they might try to do a hard count. Yeah, Looks and that's, like that's, that's what, what it was. was. Tried to force the offsides, would have been enough for a first down, but Comets stay strong, stay disciplined, and field goal unit gonna come out. Looking next week for both teams, Mason will be at Fairfield, and Princeton will be home against Hamilton. It's gonna be really nice to see Hamilton and Princeton, two, two of the best teams in the GMC so far this and year. Hamilton had a fantastic game last week against the Comets. Their defense played the lights out, and then their offense returned the favor, scored 37. Held the Comets to just six, blocked an extra point on the lone touchdown. If they're riding some momentum, certainly. It's the potential to be possibly a game of the year, especially this early in the season. You know, Mason, Fairfield, they're trying to figure things out, especially last year on senior night. That was the the game. And, you know, Mason, Mason, they blew out Fairfield. It was... And that's, that's stuff that... That stays in your memory, especially if your Talon Fisher did not have the showing he wanted. Oh yeah, you know he's gonna be he's gonna be ready to get back out against this Comet defense, and with the skill set that he has, you know one of the best passers and the best running quarterback in the GMC. And Princeton's gonna attempt a field goal here. Good snap, good hold, little low, but nevertheless it's still good. And now it's a three-score game, so you know like we said that pretty much guarantees that the Vikings are going to take a victory here. We've seen crazy things happen. I don't know if we've seen crazier things happen. I don't think we've seen anything that would be yeah. a level of no, a 17-point comeback in three minutes. But yeah, Comet's not going to roll over. Going to try to build some momentum for the rest of the season here on this drive. You know, there's been bright spots. I think that both quarterbacks have had their moments. We saw Ashurst make a couple good plays facing pressure, you know, including a, a dart to Colin Millhorn for a first down. And with We've seen Sheaf throw a couple nice deep balls, um, but it's been, it's been the mistakes. Sheaf's interception, uh, the fumble from Tally, just keeping the comments out of this game, these little mistakes, and then obviously the, the two touchdowns from Princeton were just big chunk plays. Yeah, three, three turnovers from Mason. You're not going to win a game when you play like that. And Mason, they're at a point where they can kind of experiment a little bit with the offense. I, I wonder if we see a little more of Asher, see him get a couple more passes in before the final whistle because you're kind of at a point where you don't have much to lose. You know, you get, you get, you get in three and out. And you know, it's not like, it's not like you're exactly missing anything. So we'll see if, we'll see if they try to give Asher just a little bit of more time or maybe or maybe they see what Sheaf can do in the final two minutes. And Dunn lets that one sail into the end zone. Touchback. Comets start their drive at the 20 yard line. Still hasn't gotten their offense out on the field. Both Ashurst and Sheaf in that huddle. Probably gonna see a bit of a mix of this drive. Is Sheaf what heads I guess. out to open the drive. 
And I feel like you kind of have to give the quarterback some passing attempts here. You know, you're not really gaining anything from the run. You've seen, you've seen what you have from that she all game. Drops back, facing the pressure, and just throws it away. It's the right move. Oh, nice. Gino Nesmith is there with the pressure. And, and there's some improvements too. We saw the first drive. He had, he tried to force something, and it ended up being intercepted. You know, that time, almost in the same situation, but makes a smart move. Just get it away. You got two. You got three more downs left. You know, no need to force anything. She's gonna stay out there once again. In the shotgun, running back to his right. Two receivers on each side. Sheaf once again drops back, steps up, and he's going to run. Has a little bit of space on the left, makes a man miss, and drops forward for five yards. Seems like he's pretty comfortable in his running ability. He's taken off a couple times tonight. You know, pretty good runner and thrower. Kind of hurries up the offense. Bounce back once again, throws it left side and is caught, but it won't be a first down. Yeah, out of bounds. They're intending, intended for Blevins. So Comet's going to keep the offense out. A minute 53 left in this game. Yeah. And why, Fourth and medium. And why not? You know, there's a minute 53 left. Fourth down. You know, you realize it's kind of out of reach, so. You see what you got. You know, no need, no need to punt because you give the ball back to Princeton. They just go in that victory formation. And it's game over. Chief gonna come back out for fourth down. See if they maybe try to dial up a long ball. Blevins in motion. Chief drops back. And he steps in up into the pocket, finds Billhorn, gets the first down. It was a dart to Bill Horn. Nice play. Had to step up in the pocket. Collapsed a little bit. Able to hit Bill Horn on look to be an in route. Showing off his mobility. Good footwork there. Evading the pressure. Finds the open man. And Sheaf on this last play just found Chase Blevins on the sideline for about five yards. So a nice... Nice two play, two completions. Just see, just you know, get a variety of plays in, see what works, see what doesn't, and try to try to establish something going into Fairfield next week. Some GMC scores. Lakota West up 28 nothing on Middletown in the fourth quarter. Hamilton up 17-7 on Oak Hills. Sheaf drops back again. Steps up, he's got room to run. Nearly intercepted. That one looked like it was going straight into the hands of Jamie and Olverson, but avoids the turnover. And he, not happy, Jarrett, that he wasn't able to bring that in. Would have been, would have been his first interception of the season. A lot of times, a lot of miscommunication from Sheaf throwing it, almost looking like he's throwing it to Princeton guys. But I like I like that Mason is letting him throw a lot more this drive. Just get him a little more acclimated. Drops back. It's gonna be a screen pass. It's caught and he has some room. Tries to make a guy miss. But Tally able to get into Princeton territory. That screen pass, it has been working the couple times that Mason's ran it tonight. Yeah, Tally, you know, had a great game. Really great when he gets into space, just like he does there. And he looks to be limping a little bit. He's going to come out. He's had some ankle trouble this year. That'll uh, waddling onto the off to, to the sideline. That'll likely be it for Tally. No need to put him in. Yeah, junior Jaden Smith checks in. But but now you know that screen pass is something that Mason could really use next week. Sheaf steps up. He's going to run. Going for the sideline. Picks up the first down and gets out. Avoids contact. 59 seconds remaining in this game. 
see if Mason's able to put up seven before we get out of here. And so far, the more the more that uh, Mason has been given sheep, putting the ball in Chief's hands, the more they've been able to put together a nice drive. They're showing showing a bit of promise. Jane Smith in the backfield to the left of Sheaf. Sheaf takes the snap, drops back, facing pressure, steps up. Greer has some space downfield, but can't find him. Greer had the separation on the defender, but you know, Sheaf probably knowing last time a little bit of an underthrow gave him too much space on that, just wasn't able to work. You, know, you think that might be something that they hammer big on in practice this week is that connection because, I mean, you know how good of a receiver Braden Greer is. If you're able to get that connection rolling, you know, this offense could could go far. Sheaf takes it again. He's looking to Greer, and scrambles out, finds Billhorn wide open in the middle of the field, but there's several flags on the field. Sheaf may have crossed the line of scrimmage on that throw. 45 seconds left in this game. Look at this replay. I really like how even when he's stepping up, he's still keeping his eyes downfield. There's been so many times tonight where he's had to move around in the pocket. Yeah, catch his eyes a little too downfield, though, as he crossed the line of scrimmage on that pass. So yeah. that play is going to come back. You do got to keep that in mind. Can't cross. But it is it is a good trait that you find in, in – you know, a quarterback making his first start. Yeah, and you know that awareness of where you are on the field will come with more reps. Of, of course, but you know, a lot of times when guys step up, they just immediately resort to the run. But Chief's doing a nice job of still keeping his eyes downfield, looking for anything. Chief dumps it off to Smith, gets out of bounds after a couple. Second, or excuse me, third. Six or seven coming up here. 34 seconds to go in this game. Yeah, and, and we talked about how every drive has gotten better aside from the turnovers. Every drive Mason has, they've been showing more and more promise. And, you know, Princeton, Princeton, they're the best team in the GMC for a reason. They have so much talent. And, you know, you weren't expecting Mason to put up a bunch of points, but... You just like the way that they've been, they've been playing. looking for Smith. Can't get it to him in time. Now I'm going to set up fourth down. Got to keep the offense on the field here. No need to to take the three. Once again, Chief and Smith in the backfield. He's got room on the left. He's going to scramble. Can't pick up the first down. And that's going to be it for this Comet offense. It's going to be a turnover on downs. The Vikings are going to get it back, and they'll go into victory formation. So Princeton's going to take this game 20 to 3. Overall, you like what you've seen from the defense. They've shown a, a lot of improvement from last week. You know, the Princeton offense, first in points, they're going to put up points regardless of whoever they're facing. So you like what you've seen from this defense, especially guys like Noah Dowers. You know, he might have been the best guy on this defense. Yeah, for the comments, unfortunately, just it was a couple mistakes. Uh, you know, we're susceptible to the trick play. The first touchdown Princeton had, the flea flicker, and then um, a couple interceptions, a fumble, a penalty that brought back what would have set up probably a touchdown drive. And then after that, susceptible to a special teams error, Princeton scored on a return. And yeah, D'Lo Birch takes the victory formation. Princeton going to continue their undefeated season up to 4-0. Now Comets drop to 500. They're 2-2. Two and two. Like, you said, like Daniel said earlier, Comets will face Fairfield at Fairfield next week. Comets have some things 
to work on after this week, but overall, you know, solid performance from the defense. Princeton, it wasn't it wasn't a pretty win. It was, you know, I said they won, uh, they would win ugly, but sometimes yeah. you have to do that. We're gonna watch some of the highlight plays from today's game. Yeah, and there's the big punt return for a touchdown from Antonio Hunter. Antonio Hunter, you know, that kind of blew the door open, made it 14 to nothing, and. And we talk about, you know, they weren't able to put together big drives to score points. It just really depends how you get it. You know, seven to seven at the end of the day. The pass rush played a big role. And there's some of the blunders the Comets had. Quinn Brown was able to evade a disaster play on special teams there. Even made a throw. Birch was intercepted by Charlie Raymond in one of the defensive highlights for the Comets. There's a better look at it. It's a high tally. Caden Ashurst. Yeah, from the few from the few passes we've seen from Ashurst, you wonder if they maybe go with. He looked more comfortable more. this week, certainly. Definitely and there's did. one of the one of the multiple interceptions. That was Jordan Houston who played both ways tonight. Yeah, so. The Vikings, they're going to go on and face we're Hamilton we're next week. And Mason, uh, they're going on to Fairfield. You've seen good from both teams. You've seen bad from both teams. And Mason, they're going to go down 20-3. to three. It'll, it'll give them a 1-3 and three record. And Princeton moves on to 4-0. and oh. yeah, Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I've been Andrew Little here with Daniel Panetti. Huge thank you to ICRC for having us. Thanks to everybody working the crew, you know, back in the truck, working the cameras, they made this possible. Thank you for watching and have a great night.